welcome to my channel Utsav and Kala and this is your crafty host Priyanka. So today's video as you know from the title we are going to see the red heart amigurumi yarn that they just uh, came out with recently and we are def we are going to make the flamingo today and I'm going to do a little bit of uh, review and tutorial on it and we're going to go through the whole flamingo and here you can see that I've already made my flamingo family and you will I will post this photo on Instagram so if you want to check out my Instagram um, I will have the Instagram in my uh, description below you want to check it out and these are the two flamingos that I made from the emigurumi yarn and uh, I simply love them they are so tiny and cute but I also was so much in love with the pattern that I ended up making with a rusted weight uh, yeah, uh, red heart super saver and then I made this with the loops and thread uh, chunky yarn so I was really happy how they turned out and I'm simply loving this pat pattern so much it's so simple so easy to make and I have also gone ahead and bought myself a, a emigurumi yarn for the mermaid and really really excited to use this and I'm definitely going to do a video tutorial for the mermaid uh, as for the pattern the pattern I will leave a link to the pattern in the description but it is on the red heart website it is a free pattern and um, I will leave a link in the description for you guys to check out also uh, what really uh, what else do we need is six millimeter uh, eye safety eyes right here and I got this packet for for a dollar seventy nine at Hobby Lobby and then we need a 2.25 mm crochet hook and also a pair of scissors and excuse me pair of scissors and a um, yarn needle or a uh, tapestry needle uh, apart from that the most important thing is the stitch markers uh, and something they have mentioned on the pattern that is uh, optional are the plastic pallets which I personally did not use on any of the four I made because um, first I did not get a chance to go grab myself uh, plastic pallets um, for these and these were an experiment before I even started using my emigurumi yarn so uh, simply love it uh, absolutely in love with this um, and yeah so I will let you know all the pros and cons for this um, yarn at the end of the video so now let's head to the crafting table and let's start our tutorial for today before we head to the crafting table hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop of all the new videos I post and also if you enjoy this video give me a big thumbs up and um, do share this video with your friends and family and also don't forget to leave a comment uh, down below I am so excited to read all your comments and if you have used this yarn leave me your own personal review in the comments and I will be so happy to read them I have uh, I really want to know what you guys think about this yarn so now without further ado let's get to the crafting table all right guys so here we are at our crafting table and we are going to follow the red heart free patterns of the pattern number is LM6297 and it's an easy pattern if you can see right here uh, and it's a crochet emigurumi and it was designed by it is designed by Cassandra Bibler and it gives you a list of items you will require and the gauge and they're going they also mention here that you need an optional plastic pellets I don't have it but by the time I finish uh, recording this video if I do get a chance to go to Walmart or any other craft store I will go and look into getting the plastic pellets I did make another two uh, flamingos before I started recording this uh, video tutorial so I haven't used the plastic pellets on them so I'm trying to see if uh, I'm trying to get hold of these pellets uh, to see what difference to show you guys what it what difference it makes when you use the pa plastic pellets and whatnot but I'm not sure 100% if, if by the time I'm done um, 
the body because once you start making the body you will need um, the pellets right away before you start coming to the neck part right here so i'm not sure if i would get my hands on the plastic pellets before i uh, reach the uh, reach the neck of the flamingo so that being said said these uh, both look so absolutely cute and i did not make the flamingos um, as you would have seen uh, with this yarn so this is my uh, first time making uh, the flamingo with such a small yarn I've never worked with a number one yarn so bear with me if I'm like a little bit um, it's harder for me to work with the smaller yarns because I'm so used to working with the red hat super saver all the time so that being said I'm going to follow the pattern right here as uh, as is i'm not going to change anything and the flamingo will measure three and three quarter inches or 9.5 centimeters tall um, so let's go ahead and open up the yarn and here is my yarn ball right here and first thing we need to do is i need to open this very gently uh, sometimes you know what let me just take a pair of scissors and snap it yep perfect so um here they have all the how to care for it and instructions on how to care and everything and the pattern they say is on redheart.com it's not inside the page but i'm just going to keep a hold of this and then what we first need to do is we need to pop this yarn out so we're going to pop it yarn out and we're going to separate the yarn into four different balls because there are four colors and we're going to cut the yarn right here. So this is already almost a ball. I'll just fix it in a minute and then we'll take out the gray. And cut it out. That's my second yarn and then the light pink. Okay. So you can make two flamingos from this one ball of yarn and uh, that is amazing. And right here. Okay, so since I've cut all the four yarns, I'm going to go ahead and wrap them into balls properly and then we'll start crocheting. For the tutorial, I'm going to use the darker pink yarn and I'm going to just make the light yarn flamingo, a light pink yarn flamingo offline and then I'm going to show you at the end of the video how both of them turned out. So we're going to first make the adjustable ring for the body and we are starting with the body. And it says here that uh, it is uh, the flamingo is divided into six parts. So the first one is the head and the body, which is together. Uh, it you just start at the bottom from the body, and then you um, go up to top, up to the top for the head. So first you make the adjustable ring, and then you uh, chain one, and then you do six single crochets into the ring. So that's my chain one. I've made the adjustable ring, the chain one, and, and then six single crochets. So one, two, three. four five the first row is always the hardest then after that it just gets easier five and six Here's row number six, I mean stitch number six. Pull the thread and then take your stitch marker and place the stitch marker at the last stitch. So I'm gonna attach the stitch marker and then come back and show you the row two. 
So here my round one is complete and for round two we are going to do two single crochets in each stitch around and uh, I've already added my stitch marker to the last stitch of the previous round and for that we're going to do now for round two we are going to do two single crochets in the in each stitch around that will give us a total of 12 stitches so one two two three and four and then I'm going to go ahead and finish all the stitches around and come back with round three round three so here I've completed round two and look how teeny tiny the round two is I absolutely am loving this and for round three we are going to do two single crochet in the first stitch so the next stitch so that's one and two and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch so that's going to be the second stitch we're going to do one single crochet and if we do this all around we're going to repeat this pattern around and it'll give us a total of 18 stitches so two single crochets in the next stitch And then one single crochet in the next stitch so I'm going to go ahead and finish this uh, or finish this round and come back and show. so here I've completed round three and for round four we are going to do two single crochets in the next stitch And then we're going to do one single crochet in the next two stitches. So that was two single crochet in the first stitch and then one single crochet in the next two stitches. So one and two and I'm fidgeting a little bit. Okay. Here we go. So again one more time we'll see two single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, so we'll see that one more time. Two single crochet in the next stitch. So that's one. Two. And then one single crochet in the next two stitches. So one. And then we're going to repeat this pattern around to get a total of 24 stitches. So here I've completed round 4 and for round 5 we're going to do 2 single crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to do 1 single crochet in the next 3 stitches. One, two, and three. And we're going to go ahead and finish this round following the same pattern, and we are going to get a total of thirty stitches around.
All right, everybody. So I have completed round five and we are on to round six. For that, we're going to do two single crochet in the next stitch. So one and two. And I hope this gets better as I keep working with this yarn. And then we're going to do one single crochet in the next four stitches. So one. And it doesn't sp split on me. I hope so. Two. Oh. Three. And four. And then I'm going to repeat this pattern ar uh, around to get a total of thir 36 stitches. So here I've completed row six and can you see how small this is like it is absolutely tiny for row six and now from row seven to row ten we are going to do one single crochet in each stitch around and we will have 36 stitches in each row. So that will be a total of four more rows of 36 stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Here I have completed the, all the four rows from 7 to 10 and I have moved my stitch marker up. Make sure you have the stitch marker. I always stress about stitch marker while working in rounds and especially for emigrumis. And for row number 11 we are going to do two together single crochet in the first stitch. And this one is a little bit hard because I have to pull through three loops and this um, this hook gets stuck in the in between the yarn it splits the yarn a lot so two uh, two together single crochet in the next stitch and then we are going to do one single crochet in the next four stitches so one two and four and we're going to repeat this pattern around to get a total of 18 stitch no, sorry 30 stitches so here I've completed round 11 and we got a total of 30 stitches so the next three rows we are going to do one single crochet in the next uh, in each stitch around and that is going to be row number 12 13 and 14 and we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around and we will get a total of 30 stitches per row. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all three rounds and come back at row 15. So here I've completed row 14. So 12, 13 and 14 I added three more rows and now we're going to start row 15. For that we will do two together single crochet in the next stitch. And I'm getting better at this. Uh, uh, this um, using this hook with this yarn like I mentioned earlier I've never used uh, number one yarn I always work with four number number four yarn so um, two together single crochet in the next stitch then we'll do one single crochet in the next three stitches so one two and three and we're going to repeat this pattern around to get a total of 24 stitches in the row. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this row and then come back with the next step. Here I've completed row 15 and for row 16 we have to do one single crochet in each stitch around. That will give us a total of 24 stitches uh, around. So one single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing the one single crochet in each stitch around and come back with the row 17. So the here I've completed row 16 and for row 17 we're going to do two together single crochet in the next stitch and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next two stitches. So that's my two together single crochet and then one single crochet in the next two stitches. So one and two and we're going to repeat this pattern around to get a total of 18 stitches. Mm -hmm. 
So here I've completed row 17 and at this point you can add the plastic pellets. I did not get a chance to go out and grab a bag of plastic pellets but I'm going to uh, buy one of those um, in in near future and then do a video on it showing how to use it and what are the advantages of using the plastic pellets. So um, I'll definitely do a video. I didn't get a, a chance to go out and get it but right if you want uh, at this point you can uh, grab a, a very thin sock or a stocking and then just uh, add a little bit of plastic pellets not too much just enough because this is a very small project a very little quantity and tie it in between the stocking or a very thin socks and place it at the bottom and then add fiber fill on top of it so that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to add fiber fill and come back and show you row 18. So here I have filled in this filled in this with uh, polyfill or fiber fill and I did not get a chance to get the uh, plastic pallets and now we are going to begin row 18 which is going to be two single crochet um, two together single crochet in the next stitch and when you put the stuffing in it becomes easier to hold on to it a little bit and then we are going to do one single crochet in the next stitch. So we're going to repeat this pattern around to get a total of 12 stitches. Here I have completed row 18 and for row 19 to 22 we'll just do one single crochet in each stitch around. So we will get a total of 12 stitches per row and that will make the neck of the flamingo and I am absolutely so much in love with this flamingo as you saw earlier i have made so many of them already so here i'm going to go ahead and go finish all the four rows that's 19 20 21 and 22 and each row will be 12 stitches and i'll come back with row 23. so here i have completed So here I've completed row 22 and for row 23 we are going to do two single crochet in each stitch around and that will give us a total of 24 stitches around so one single crochet in the first stitch and then again the single again another single crochet in the same stitch so we're going to do two single crochet in each stitch around getting a total of 24 stitches around so once I'm done doing all 24 stitches around I'll come back with the next row here I have completed row 23 and for row 24 25 and 26 we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around which will give us a total of 24 stitches around in each row and um, we're going to repeat And I'm going to go ahead and finish all three rows and come back and show you row 27. Here I've completed row 26 and before starting row 27 I added a little bit of fiber fill in the neck area but uh, it does not mention in the uh, pattern itself to add uh, more stuffing at this point but I just went ahead and added a little bit of fiber fill and if you guys feel like you need to add a little bit of fiber fill you can always add a little bit in the neck and for row 27 now we are going to do two together single crochet in the next stitch that's one and insert a hook pull up a loop through first and second stitch yarn over and pull through all three loops and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next two stitches yeah so it's going to be one single crochet in the second and the third stitch so one and two let me do it one more time because I was talking a lot so it's going to be two together single crochet in the next stitch so one loop the second loop yarn over and pull through all three loops and then we are going to do two single one single crochet in the next two stitches one and two 
So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this pattern all around and then come back with row 28. For row 28, we are going to do one single crochet in each stitch around and then we will get a total of 18 stitches. So my uh, camera shut down for some reason. Uh, it said error, some kind of error, and I had already gone ahead and placed this uh, safety eye here. But at the end of row 28, we have 18 stitches around, and that is enough space so that we can put our fingers in and place the safety eyes uh, before we go ahead and make uh, close the rounds up here. So we need to count down. This is row number 28 at the top. 27 26 and 25 so we are going to place the safety eyes in between row number uh, 26 and 25 and we're just going to i'm eyeballing it at um, the distance between both the eyes but you can definitely uh, decide how many stitches you want to leave in between uh, each uh, eye between both the eyes and i'm going to just place it right here and then take the safety cap and uh, press it down inside so that the eyes don't come off and that's our eyes guys we have completed attaching the eyes for the flamingo and for row number 29 we are going to do another round of decrease and that is going to be two together single crochet in the next stitch and then here I have the two together single crochet and then we're going to do single crochet in the next stitch so we're going to repeat this pattern around to get a total of 12 stitches so here I've added a little bit more stuffing and uh, you can add according to your wish how uh, soft you want the flamingo to be and now you're going to do the final round that is round 30 and it's going to be two together single crochet in each stitch around and and i'm going to repeat this pattern around to get a total of six stitches and uh, i'll come back and show you how i close off and then we will go ahead and start making the wings for the flamingo so here i have completed row 30 that was the last row for the head and the body and then we are going to cut a little we're going to cut a little bit of tail because we are not going to need it for sewing together anything and then we are just going to make bind off here and we're going to take our tapestry needle and we're going to sew a little bit um, around to close this top uh, center hole so just sew through a few uh, stitches so that all the stitches uh, get tightened up and they clo come close together and yep I, I go once round once and then I'm just going to go down again and then come out anywhere through any row so that it gets locked in. And then I'm going to snip off the axis. Yeah. And that's the body and the head of our flamingo. And I know it looks weird at the moment. It looks like some kind of an alien. But once we put on the beak and the wings and the legs, it's definitely going to look really, really cute. Uh, I did, uh, when I made my first one, It I found it really funny. So, so since we are still using the pink yarn, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with the wings first. And we'll, we'll do the beak and the legs later. And... Um, we're going to make a magic ring and then we're going to do chain one it's chain one and now we're going to do six single crochet into the magic ring or the adjustable ring uh, whichever one you call on the pattern they have written adjustable ring 
so i don't want you guys to get confused uh, with the terminology i call it magic ring it's the same as adjustable ring one two three four five and six and then we're going to pull this together to tighten up the circle and we're going to place the stitch marker on the last stitch and that is our first row the six single crochets and for our second row we are going to do uh, two single crochets in each stitch around and uh, it mentions in the pattern that we don't have to join the um, join the rows we just work in continuous circle so now you're going to do two single crochet in each stitch around and that will give us a total of 12 stitches so one and two Oops. and then the two in the second stitch and I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the stitches and come back and show you row three so here I've completed round two for round three we are going to do two single crochet in the next stitch so one and two and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch and we're going to repeat this pattern around to get a total of 18 stitches so for round number four we are going to do a slip stitch in the next stitch so here is the end of round three and then we are going to do a slip stitch in the stitch next to the end last stitch in the round three and i'm oh, sorry it's a slip stitch so we're going to do a slip stitch here and then we are going to do chain four so one two three and four chains and then we're going to do a slip stitch in the next stitch so slip stitch into the next stitch of the first slip stitch and so now after that slip stitch we are going to do chain six so one two three four five and six and then we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch of the last slip uh, last stitch and I don't know why it's hard to do the slip stitch but maybe because I work really tight uh, on my crocheting uh, if you do it a little bit looser than I do it it will not be that hard after that we are going to do after the slip stitch we're going to do chain eight so one two three four five six seven and eight and then we're going to do a slip stitch in the next stitch So here's the slip stitch and I keep splitting this yarn uh, that has been an issue with me uh, maybe you would not be able to you would not do that like me but I keep splitting it because I don't know so anyways the next stitch uh, next we're gonna do six uh, chain again so one two three four five and six and then we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch
and then we are going to do chain 4 so 1 so chain 4 now so 1 2 3 and 4 and then we are going to slip stitch in the next stitch last slip stitch and uh, here and then we are going to take our pair of scissors keep a long tail up and then we are just going to bind off and that completes our wings and then uh, we can sew in the the uh, the tail end on the center not do not sew in the last uh, tail uh, but the beginning tail uh, and do not sew in the ending chain uh, tail just sew in the beginning tail to kind of close in uh, tighten the loop in the center although my loop is really tight uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of stitches and snip off the yarn just so as to secure And that's about it and the less yarn you use uh, for this uh, the more you can save and that's my first wing and then we're going to make two of the same wings so I'm going to finish up the second one and then we're going to start with the legs for the flamingo here I've completed both the wings for the flamingo and it is so 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 cute i'm absolutely loving these wings and we're going to put them aside and i've already done one leg for the flamingo and that's what we're going to start next and for that we're going to bring out our gray yarn and already. and we're going to make the adjustable ring and for this particular uh, for the leg make sure that uh, you have um the loop bigger because this is where we are going to use this tail end to join the legs to the body so just keep the loop a little bit longer so that you have some space to sew the legs to the body and we're going to make the adjustable ring first and then we're going to do chain one and then we're going to do six single crochets into the adjustable ring or the magic ring so one two three four five and the last one six and then we'll just pull the loop tight And close it up and I think I misplaced my stitch marker I will be right back but here's the first round for the six single crochets and I'll be right back after searching for my stitch marker so finally found my stitch marker which I keep losing I don't know why and now we're going to begin row two and for row two we're going to do two single crochet in the next stitch so one and two and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next two stitches so one single crochet in the second stitch and one single crochet in the third stitch and we're going to repeat this around and it will give us a total of eight stitches so 
So here I've completed round two and for round three to 14, we are going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So we'll have eight single crochets in each stitch. I mean each round, uh, eight uh, single crochets in each round. And that will make, that will complete the leg for the flamingo. And then the leg and the foot are both joined together, so work together. So once the leg is done, I'll come back and show you how we are going to work on the foot part. So here I have completed all the rows up till row 14. And uh, now uh, we don't need the stitch marker no more. That's fun part. And we are going to, uh, because it... Because it's a tube, we are going to flatten the tube and we are going to have the last stitch from row 14 on our right hand side uh, and then we are going to press the tube down and we are going to insert the hook into the next stitch and we are going to take it out from the back stitch. So it's going to sew both the, both the parts together and we are going to do a single crochet right here. And we're going to single crochet two more single crochets so there will be a total of three single crochets and we're just going to insert it and pull up a loop and it's a little bit hard like i said it's always been a tr it's always been an issue with me ha having this yarn split up and then when you're doing through both the front and the back through two stitches it's a little bit harder so Yep, here you go. Perfect. And then the last stitch, and we'll have three single crochets, and that will be the first row of the foot. So here I have my first row completed for the foot, and that. So here we have completed um, the first row of the foot. For row two, we are going to do a chain one and then turn around. And then we're going to do two single crochet in the next stitch and we're going to only be working in the front loops for uh, each row so two single crochet in the first stitch front loops only and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch and then we're going to do two single crochets in the last stitch making sure we are working only in the front loops and not both the loops. That's one single crochet and the second single crochet. So that completes our row two and it gives us a total of five stitches. We're going to start row three and for that we are again going to do chain one and turn our work and we're going to do now we will just work in both the loops and we're going to do two single crochet in the first stitch so one two and then we're going to do one single crochet in the next three stitches so one two and three and then we're going to do two single crochets in the last stitch that's stitch number one and We are going to do the second stitch in the same stitch and that's the second single crochet and that completes our row three for row three and it gave us a total of seven single crochets for row four we are going to do chain one and turn and we're going to do one single crochet in the first stitch one 
one half double crochet in the second stitch three double one double crochet in the next three stitches so one one double crochet two double crochet second double crochet in the next stitch and then the third double crochet in the third stitch so that is three double one double crochet in the next three stitches and now we're going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch that's the half double crochet and then we're going to do one single crochet in the last stitch So here we have completed our foot and we have to make two legs uh, similar in a similar way and we are just going to uh, finish we finish the round four so with this single crochet our uh, foot and the leg is complete and we are going to take a pair of scissors and snip off the yarn not a very long tail because we are not going to use this tail end to sew anything so we're just going to bind off here and then we're going to sew in this end and the leg is ready and we are going to make two legs uh, similar to this right here and now the only thing that is left to make is the beak so I'll be right back with my black yarn and we'll make the beak for the beak we are again going to make the adjustable ring and we're going to start with the black and it's going to be a two colored beak so we're going to use black and gray on here and we're going to do chain one And then we're going to do six single crochets into the into the magic ring. So that's one, so, and then two. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the six single crochets offline and come back with round two. So here I have completed round one and closed the loop and also added the stitch marker. For round two, we are going to do two single crochet in the next two stitches. So that's one single crochet, two single crochet in the next stitch. And then again, we are going to do two single crochet in the next stitch. Voila. and that's the second stitch in the second stitch kind of confusing so we did two single crochets in the first and the second stitch now we're going to do one single crochet in the next four stitches so one two three and then the fourth stitch will be in the stitch with the marker so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the marker since we're going to move up the marker We're going to place the stitch marker on the last stitch and this gives us a total of eight stitches around and now 
we're going to change our color here so I'm just going to keep a little bit of strand and for the color change actually we're going to remove the stitch marker we're going to have two loops of black in the last stitch so here is hold on so for the color change we're going to So we're going to for the color change we're going to have do like half single crochet we're going to have two loops onto the hook take our next color which is going to be gray and then yarn over with the gray and pull through both the black loops and that this will give us a color change and then we're just simply going to knot this two yarn together so that it secures itself um, and we don't uh, we don't have to worry of, of them coming undone as it will go on the inside of the beak so I'm just going to I knotted them double knotted it and I'm going to snip it off not really close but a little bit closer uh, to the knot not really really close I left a little bit here which is okay because it's going to go on the inside of the beak and now for row three and four with gray we are going to do one single crochet in each stitch around and don't forget our stitch marker right here for the last stitch so we're going to have a total of eight single crochets in each row and I'm going to do a couple with you guys and then I'm going to Go ahead and finish both the row and come back and show you how my beak looks like. So, so that's my second single crochet and then I'm going to go ahead and finish up and then come back and show you how the beak looks like. So here is our beak is completed. I have done row three and four and then we are going to just cut a long tail. and then bind off and then we are going to use this tail to sew the beak to the flamingo head and here our beak is complete let's gather all our body parts for the flamingo and start sewing them and here i'm just using a yarn needle and threading the tail end of the beak and I'm going to place the beak right in between the two eyes and it's big enough that it fits uh, in between the eyes and we are just going to do whip stitch and that's what I have used uh, to sew all the body parts together and then just go through a couple of stitches with you guys and then attach it completely and show you how it looks like but once you sew one one time it just attaches itself and then it becomes really easy to sew around on the whole beak so i'm going to go ahead and finish sewing around the whole beak and then come back and show you how to attach the wings i have attached the beak for the flamingo and now it looks absolutely adorable i know without the beak it was looking kind of uh not that great but with the once the beak attaches it looks absolutely adorable and now we're going to take the wings and we're going to start attaching the wings what i'm going to do is i count right here this um, line where we made the four rows of 12 single crochets each and i'm just counting uh, seven rows from here the top one so one two three four five six seven and i'm going to place my wing right there at the seventh between the seventh and the eighth row from the top and i'm going to attach it with the body so and like i said once you attach one stitch it just becomes easier and then you can do the whip stitch really easily And 
I'm sorry if I'm going out of the uh, camera. Uh, it's this thing is too small, but um, I'm going to go ahead and finish sewing all around except this these chain stitch that we did. I'm going to leave it open and I'm going to sew around here uh, so that it it is attached properly. And I'm also going to go ahead and attach the other wing on the other side. And then I'll come back and show you how to attach the legs together. I have attached the wing and isn't it looking absolutely adorable? And now we are at our final part for the flamingo and that is attaching the legs. And we're just going to take the tail end and we're just going to place it here. I attach it both right in the front stitches and I'm just going to go through here. So I'm just going to go through the front stitch and pull it all together and then I'm going to sew in each stitch individually. And completely attach the leg. So I'm going to go ahead and finish attaching both the legs and then I'll show you how the finished flamingo looks like. And here is our completed all sewed in together flamingo and I absolutely absolutely love it it is so cute uh, let me go uh, grab my measuring tape I think I should have one on my table but I'm not sure actually I do yay so I didn't have to go far let me get a measuring tape and see how big uh, this flamingo turned out so this flamingo actually it turned out six inches if you can see from top to bottom it was six inches but it said on the pattern that my flamingo should be uh, three and three quarters inches tall which is uh, not true so it is six inches tall and that's okay I still absolutely love this pattern. I have um, made so many of them. So let's get back to seeing my face and we will check out all my flamingos and I'll tell you more about the yarn, how I felt and what I felt for it. Okay, so let's go back to my face. Guys, so I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and we, sim we made our flamingo and this is how it looked like. It is so, so, so cute as i showed you in the beginning of the video absolutely love this uh, flamingos and um what i wanted to let you guys know is that there is enough yarn left over that that's my personal review for this um this uh yarn the emigurumi yarn is i can make at least two more flamingos out of the yarn that is left over so one will be dark pink and one will be light pink or i can mix them together and um, do striped or something like that and there is a ton of black we don't even need this much black this is definitely going to be a lot of leftover and then we have this much gray which is enough to make two more beaks and four more legs i don't think uh, there will be any leftover after that but we definitely can make mo two more from this uh, yarn that's left over so that's one thing so the the average cost of this yarn is 6.99 six 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 ninety nine six and seven between six and seven dollars i got it from michael's and it was six dollars there and then i used a 50 percent off coupon on each of them that i purchased and i both purchased i purchased both of them on a different day so i used two 50 percent off coupons and I got them for $3 plus tax. So yes, it is cheap if you use the coupon and then it'll be like worth your money. Um, you can make at least two. It says you can make two from one skein, one skein of yarn. So that's a good uh, amount. Uh, you can, if you use the coupon, that is $6 for an emigurumi yarn is a little bit steep. I don't think I would want to pay six dollars for such a tiny toy or um i don't know that's my personal opinion plus what i felt is that 
the yarn split a lot uh, a lot more and I think it's a little bit on a thicker side considering the fact that it is a number one yarn because I've seen other yarns that are much thinner and um, uh, thinner number one yarn than this one. It split a lot on me as you had seen throughout the tutorial. I was struggling to fix the yarn and maybe it was me. I'm not saying that the company is at fault but um, maybe it was me. I was new. I've never used number one yarn before so maybe um, when I use other number one yarn I might struggle again but I have worked with threads and uh, very thin th threads and I have experience in that so I don't know uh, if that is different than the yarn but the yarn did split up a lot and I was a uh, uh, I was worried uh, I did not use plastic pallets which uh, I will definitely do a video on separately to show you guys how how it works but mine sit up upright so i'm okay with it so i feel personally if i can make four out of these it's worth my money i'm paying three dollars and i can make four toys out of it i can uh, make um, a keychain and put it on a bag or something i love the yarn but then there are it has a, its pros like okay if you are you are going to only make it one time you get everything in one ball you use your 50 percent off coupon you have everything you make it and you're done and then you don't need it no more but if you make a lot of amigurumis and from the back behind me if you can see i make a lot of amigurumis uh, this is um something uh i would not want because i already had these colors in my stash maybe not in number one but i definitely have these colors in my stash on other way it's definitely the super savers i have these so a person who's making a lot of amigurumi i think this they won't find it like um that much useful or that much appreciative but anybody who wants to start amigurumi and they want to get a feel of it this is a definitely a good starter kit just get the yarn you have all the colors you just have to pay for one yarn a hook and uh, some um stitch markers and you are on your go like you are on the go you have already started creating it but then the frustration would come if you are a beginner you're using a really small uh, needle or small hook to crochet and the yarn splitting up so there are both the sides you are a starter you take one yarn you have your toy ready and you you can get a feel whether you like amigurumi or you don't but on the other hand if it splits too much it you start getting frustrated as a new uh, amigurumi crocheter and then you easily give up or you might just not finish the project or you might finish it but you might hate it because hey it took me so much time and anything else i make is going to take me too much time so this is my personal opinion uh i feel it that way although i absolutely loved it i am so happy with this cute little flamingos i'm not even going to complain anymore but i hope you guys enjoy this video and i hope you understand where i'm coming from when i say that um this yarn is 50 50 i can't be completely in love with it because it's absolutely amazing and i cannot completely throw out the fact that it give us uh, enough yarn to finish two plus i have so much yarn left which will give me two more so definitely there are both pros and cons and i think i'll buy all the different 12 different yarns they have but it depends completely on to you whether you want to work with this yarn or you want to just keep working with the yarn of your comfort zone so that's about it guys for today's video and I hope you enjoyed this review tutorial and please again if you haven't done so already subscribe to my channel to stay in the loop of all the new videos I post and don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and share this video with your friends and family. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye.